know what it feels like to not believe in myself. It was the most devastating moment of my life, realizing that my best friend was just gone. I went on a search to find myself. Life is about picking yourself up over and over again. You can rise past your trials. You can be brave. <laughs> the Dolby Theater, it's one of the biggest shows of my career, and how lucky am I? I've fallen multiple times. Every time you get up a little bit stronger. This tour is about the courage to feel, to feel everything. Lindsay, welcome back to Build. We love having you here. Oh, thanks for having me. I love coming here. Good. It's always a good time. Well, we always have a great time with you. This time we're talking about a brand new documentary called Brave Enough that came out just last month. And uh, I watched it last night. And it's, it, gets, you get, it gets pretty emotional. It, I was real. I was yeah. pretty vulnerable in the film. Yeah. For what, sure. Did you expect to um, show that much emotion before going into the filming of this? Well, you know, it's actually kind of ironic as I had the idea, oh, I want to do a tour documentary, like, you know, a while ago. And we started look, looking for the right partners for it. And when I would pitch it to people, I was like, it's going to be a fun-filled, energetic life on the road. And then life kind of turned upside down right before we kind of sealed, you know, the whole project and started filming. That's when everything kind of happened. And so it turned into an extremely different project than the one that I had envisioned in the beginning. But... I think it's so much more meaningful. It's a lot. I, I think it's something that people can, you know, learn something from, or at least feel like they're understood or they can relate to it. Because everybody's lost something or someone, and uh, so yeah, I guess I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out. Yeah. So um, to to go back a little bit, um, you lost your keyboardist, and yes. uh, and that kind of drove a lot of the album, and then uh, subsequently the tour. Mm -hmm. Was it um, hard to open up a little bit about that as you were going on from tour date to tour date in, in front of the cameras? You know, the thing was, is I I had kind of made this goal before he even passed away. I was like, I'm going to try to be more open to feeling my own emotions. I had read some books by Brene Brown, and she's all about vulnerability and not blocking and not numbing your emotions. And so as I kind of went through this process, I was trying so hard to really feel everything mm -hmm. and not not be afraid of the bad. Um, and it really has allowed me to kind of cope with it and process it. And even on tour, I would speak about it on stage very openly. And, um, you know, so even the show, I wanted it to be like fun and entertaining, but at the same time, I'm gonna share some really personal stuff. And, um, and so the documentary was kind of even a deeper dive into that. And at the same time, though, we're seeing a lot of your behind the scenes and really what it takes to put a tour together. And this is not easy. No. Uh, I mean, I feel like you're involved in so many aspects of the process. Can you talk a little bit about that and how, how you envision one of your stage shows? Yes. So, I mean, I'm even thinking about the album, or, or as I'm writing the album, I'm thinking very much how it's going to translate into a live show, because I just love the show. I love putting together a whole experience for people, and I guess I'm so involved in every piece of it, because I kind of have a vision of how I want it to be, and so, you know, I'm saying, this is going to, this Bollywood number is going to, you know, I want to take everyone to, into the Bollywood world, or this number, I want it to feel like, you know, angels are dancing around in white dresses, you know, and and so each song is supposed to have a purpose in the show. And it's, it's there for a reason. You know, and that's why if we have to cut the show down for any reason, it's so hard to pick what song leaves because every song has a purpose. And there's something production-wise and performance-wise, there's something unique about every song, um, you know, the way I like to plan the shows. I also loved that... Um you know, even though, you you know, we see you get a little emotional at times, there was such an, uh, a theme of, like, uplifting inspiration, I think, throughout oh, it that's all. Nice. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> but even just seeing you interact with your fans, um, can you talk a little bit about that and how, how you're able to kind of overcome some of the, you know, the hard times, but also have that um, experience and, and closeness with your fans? Absolutely. And, you know, I'm glad you say that because when I've, you know, finish this piece, this documentary, I was like, oh gosh, I hope it's not just depressing. You know, I, no. I hope it's still entertaining and uplifting because that's, you know, you always hope that it will be. So thank you. I'm glad you say that. Um, but, you know, it, it's kind of been really awesome. My fans have been there for me in such a real way. And some days, you know, you see in the documentary, some days I would get really bad news about my dad's health. I'd literally be crying in the dressing room. And then 
oh my gosh, I have to get ready for meet and greet. I have to go out there and smile. And, you know, my hope as an artist is that I can uplift people and that they can come to my show and escape whatever they're going through, whatever their bad day is. I hope they come to my show and find it as an escape. And in turn, anytime you're, I guess, serving someone or, or trying to be there for someone else, it does kind of make you for a moment actually forget whatever you're going through it, to an extent. And so by being there and seeing people's smiles, you know, it's like I was there to try to be there for them, but in turn it's like they actually ended up lifting me quite a bit and giving me the strength to then go on stage and do a show. Oh, I love hearing that. And through it all, it's like you're playing for thousands and thousands of fans. Do you ever, you know, do you still pinch yourself? All the time, yeah. actually. All the time. I'll be on stage sometimes. And I'll, I'll, every once in a while, you get these really real moments of like, I can't believe this is my life. Like, all, every single person in the audience tonight, you know, there's like, I don't know, 5,000 people out there. They all bought a ticket to come see my show. And that's incredible to me. And so sometimes even on stage, I'll even have a moment where I'm like, I can't believe you're all here. Like, this is awesome. And, um, you know, it's, it's amazing when you kind of, because sometimes it becomes normal and it becomes your life. I do this every single night or, you know, this is just how it is. And it's, But then you have these moments where you're like, but also this is my dream and I'm getting to live it. And that's amazing. I also got the sense that you really love to be on the road. Is that true? I do. Yeah? I do. I love tour. And part of it's because, um, you know, I'm actually quite the homebody. So I didn't think I would like the road, but it's really become the road is a second home to me. You know, we, I, we have our bus. I have my tour family, people that I've toured with, you know, from the beginning. So years of touring with these people, and they have become like family to me. And so it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a home away from home, and I love it. Do you have any must-have items that you bring on the road with you? I'm failing today because one of them isn't here. Uh, my dog, Luna, oh. she came on tour with us, and it was, oh, it was just a lifesaver to have her. She really is, like, my emotional support dog. I know people laugh when I say that, but I'm like, no, she really is, like, my – she would uplift me, and, you know, like, any everyone's happier when there's a little dog around. Um, so that that's a must-have for me. Also, what are some strange must-haves? Um, I have to have peanut butter and hummus in my dressing room, and – I usually, I always travel with a snack. Okay. You know, even in my backpack in the back room, there's several snacks. I might have taken a couple kind bars from the dressing room, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Confessions. All good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, that's another thing that you have been very open about is your, you know, your past struggle with anorexia. And I, and I really commend you for that because I think it's really important to talk so openly about that. And you talk about it a little bit in the, in the film. Yeah. Why do you think it's important to, um, you know, to convey that to your fans and to young women who might be facing some of the same struggles? Well, you know, I think it's so important to talk about because when I finally, you know, said for the first time, I think I'm anorexic, it was like this understanding of, oh my gosh, that's what I've been dealing with for years. And I had no idea till this moment for somehow, you know, I dealt with it for quite a long time before I even realized it was a possibility because in my mind, crazy people were depressed and anorexic and had anxiety. I didn't realize that this is actually a very, very common thing. And if I had understood that, I would have I could have possibly missed years of beating myself up and hating myself. And, and so, you know, and I, I've overcome it. I live a very normal life now. And it's, it's something that I understand how to manage now in my lifestyle. And so I, I know it's possible for people to get better. And I want people to realize that there's hope in any way, whether you realize you have a problem, whether you don't, there's hope. Where do you get that self-confidence from? Because I know this it's so easy, especially performing amongst so many people. And we saw you, of course, on reality television and, you know, get, getting criticized publicly. Where do you get that self-confidence from to get up on stage night after night? Ooh, you know, we all beat ourselves up. We're all our worst critics, and, you know, and I think even sometimes we all feel a little bit like an imposter in our own life. Like, do I deserve, like, I've felt that before. Do I deserve to go out on that stage? I'm not the best violinist. Like, how did I even get here? Um, but I think the confidence comes from just, you know, hard work mm -hmm. and also taking care of yourself. Um, I, I've gotten into meditation in the last few years, and, you know, mindfulness and really practicing self-love it takes practice it's not something that comes naturally to very many people I think most of us have to consciously choose to nurture the positive rather than the negative because they're both going to be there you know and you know if you're thinking negative thoughts about yourself 
turn around, say yeah. something nice. And really, it's that inner self-talk and that self-dialogue that can be so destructive. And I think we are our worst enemy sometimes if we don't flip it. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's great advice for young people and anyone who might be, you know, facing that type, those types of challenges. So Brave Enough came out last year, the album itself. Yes. And um, can you talk a little bit about how it's been to transform the songs you, you know, you play in the studio versus putting it on as a live show? Because it's, you know, it's a whole thing. You have dancers, right, you, have, right. you have, you know, guest singers and everything. Yeah. What are the challenges and what are the, what's, what's the fun part of doing that? Oof. Well, you know, it's funny. I like to see songs as having kind of three separate lives. There's the album version. You know, yeah. you, you, it's all audi you know, auditory. You just listen to it and it's got to stand on its own. Then there's the music video. You got to be able to bring it to life in some sort of visual way, you know, that can be appreciated through a phone, you know, yeah. something this small. But then you also have to make it explode and be huge on a stage in real life. And so you've got to think about a song in so many different ways. And I love that. I love being able to reinvent something. And, um, but yeah, for stage, I'm so much about, about dance yeah. and theatricality and costumes. Like the more sparkles, the better, <laughs> the more costume changes I get to have. Great. And, um, the more I get to jump around with my dancers and twirl, the better. Um, but yeah, it really comes to me. I want to fully entertain people. I don't want to just get up and play. Mm -hmm. And so I want the show to have an arc. And so the way that I arrange the songs is very strategic and the, there's got to be your sentimental moment. It has to start huge for me. And then, you know, it kind of, this is the way the show looks. I've even, I sometimes draw it out on paper. I'm like, we start here and then we kind of calm down a little bit and then it's got to end like way up there. And, um, and it's really fun to kind of make an emotional journey out of a show. I love it. Have you started writing songs for the next project? Well, I've started, I guess, it's actually interesting. Yes, it's, is it still, no, it's June. Yeah, it's just June. June. Just I'm so long. Okay, <laughs> we're in June, but yet I'm uh, I'm listening to Christmas music at the moment. Ooh. I actually watched, um, you know, Christmas movie. I watched Home Alone the other day. I'm starting to lightly get into the Christmas spirit because I'm writing a Christmas album. Yes, soon. amazing. That's so great. excited, oh, yeah. That's great. Well, that is, you think you'll have it out for this uh, holiday season? Well, they already started booking the holiday tour. Okay, so, so <laughs> I've uh, yeah, I was on a call with my booking agents the other day, and I was they're like, yeah, we got it all mapped out. I'm like, you realize the album's not written, like started yet? And they're like, well, you better get, get in the it. studio, <laughs> <laughs> Taskmaster. No, I'm really excited. I, I I want to do a Christmas tour this year, so yeah, that's really exciting. Do you think you'll do original and um, classics a combination? Yeah. I think mostly classics. Yep. You know, it's like you can't. You only get a month to listen to your favorite Christmas songs. There's not a whole lot of room for. But I'm gonna probably do at least two original songs, but mostly your classics. Oh, I love it. Okay, yeah. I, Christmas time is such an exciting time, but it's hard to get in the spirit <laughs> when it's like hot out and it's summertime. Right? I know, living yeah. in LA with like yeah, riding my bike down Santa Monica, and I'm like, okay, I need to get in the zone. So I'm gonna decorate my my room as soon as I get in the studio. We're putting up some kind of a fake Christmas tree, you know to try to trick ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you writing on the road when you're on the road? Are you bringing your violin out? Are you write, writing when you're on the road too? You know what? I've never been great at writing on the road. Yeah. Like I definitely fill my time. I'll edit tons of stuff and work on music videos and you know, like we do all kinds of stuff, but I've never been able to like, it's like a separate process. I have to be in a different mindset and I've never been able to do it as much as I wish I could. But you recently, um, you recently released a new music video, and how much are involved are you in the direction of that? Um, probably annoyingly involved <laughs> for almost any director I work with. I mean, I'm, I always have the story all mapped out, oftentimes storyboarded with color palettes of like, this is what I want the night scenes to be like, very blue, and I want the day to feel green and yellow. You know, like I'm mm -hmm. very, very involved um, sketching costumes. I love music like I mean I love the entire process of it and so um you know and I've started to direct a lot of my own music videos because I was like I'm kind of directing a lot of the what's going on and so I decided I would try to direct um, one of my most recent videos and it was awesome and so I think uh I mean <laughs> here I am tooting my own heart it was so good <laughs> no, I mean the experience was awesome and I was very happy with the product and so it's something I think I'm going to do more oh that's great and you recently contributed a song to a video game for the first time I did. Yeah. and I did write that on a, yeah. on the road <laughs> nice 
So how did, how was that experience? Um, it's pretty cool to see your song getting turned into you know for a video. Yeah. Game. It's like totally different than very what different. You do. Yeah, and it was definitely something on my bucket list. So yeah. it's like I you know compose for video games. So it was really cool to get you know I got to see some of the early versions of the game, some of the early artwork and the costumes and you know um, and so it kind of helped me know where to put my head as I wrote the music and it's it's a very magical mystical game so I is a perfect fit for you know I like to think my music is very magical and mystical so it felt right what else is on your bucket list <sighs> what else is well Christmas album was one thing okay. um and t honestly at the very top of my bucket list is to have a Vegas show someday yes I would love that. That you would be great for that. It'd be so That'd fun. Be amazing. Yeah. I, I would go come out and see that. You'd come out and see yeah, my show. Well, I'll give you tickets yes. when I get All there. All right. You guys will come on out with us. Yeah, that that's a very very cool. I mean, then you don't have to leave anywhere. You just stay exactly. in Vegas. Cuz I'm like then I could be, you know, I could be a good mom and have my kids in school and like, you know, not have to steal them to take them on the road all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Every, a lot of a lot of big stars have done it. Britney, Mariah, now Lindsey Sterling. You've teamed up with a lot of different uh, collaborators over the years, Lizzie Hale, et cetera. Is there uh, a couple of collaborate, collaborators that you're dreaming of teaming with? You know, well, even for the Christmas album, I'm already starting to think of fun people that I would love to work with, you know, and, um, you know, I love Pink. I love Haley Williams. Like, those are some of my favorite artists that I would love to do something with. You know, Pink, if we did something together, we'd get to, like, fly from the ceiling. <laughs> as yes. we did it I don't because she always does that and that's very intriguing to me um, but uh, also I'm hoping to work with like two cellos someday I don't know if you guys are aware of them but they're this awesome like rock and cello duo so I hope to work with them someday but yeah I have a very interesting diverse bucket list of collaborators well we look forward to all of that okay when you have some down downtime like real downtime mm -hmm. what, what do you do I really like riding my bike. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> I okay. love bike riding, and um, and I, I recently got a little like bag so I can take my dog on the front of me, and I can ride my bike with my dog. Oh my gosh, I love it. I had, you're, it's super easy, right? Well, you're, yeah. You're riding around LA, maybe. Riding around right? LA, go, you know, stop and get a, a smoothie, and then keep riding. I just, I love, or hiking. I, I love getting outdoors because I feel like unless I make an effort to go outside, I will be stuck in the studio you know, or practicing or editing inside in a chair like all day. And so I gotta make myself go outside. Gotta make yourself go outside. Vitamin D, that's I why I'm so pale. You know? <laughs> America's Got Talent, it's been seven years, right? Has it been that long? Gosh, I think it, it was. Has. I think it was seven years ago. It's 2010. It's kind of, yeah, it's crazy. And you kind of reference it in the in the documentary. You talk about how after, um, you know, you got criticized from for some of the, some of the judges, mm -hmm. uh, you went into the bathroom and just cried until like, people were all gone from the, from the studio. Do you yeah. feel as though kind of having that experience has made you a better violinist, has made you a better performer and better person, just having kind of gone through something like that? I, you know, it's funny, I love that story now that it's in my past. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now that it's behind me, it's great. Um, but I mean, really it did kind of, I think it helped me gain that grit that is so important in the industry. You have to have enough, you know, self-confidence within yourself like we talked about so that you're not going to fall apart when somebody else doesn't believe in you or when you get mean nasty comments online or, you know you can still say well I still I still am a worthwhile human being you know yeah they're not right you know it, but you're going to get a lot of that in life and so that experience was publicly so public and so humiliating that it really made if I could get over that it kind of prepped me to be able to let stuff roll off my back in the future a lot easier. Sure. Can you remember the moment uh, where you realized, okay, I want to be a performer. This is what I want to do. This is what yes. I'm meant to be doing. Absolutely. It was, I was in this pageant. I was trying to earn money for college. So yeah, I did a pageant and they had a talent category and there was a lot of violinists in this pageant and they were all going to be playing concertos and we all had about the same skill level. And I was like, how am I going to, like, it's basically who does the best that night. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, what if I did something like way out there? And so I wrote this like rock violin song and I practiced really hard so that I could jump around and be kind of comical as I did it and move. And the audience response was unlike anything I'd ever felt before. They were cheering in, you know, mid song and clapping and like smiling. And when I finished, you know, my piece and bowed, I just had this overwhelming electrifying feeling. And I was like, I have to figure out how to make this my life because like, this is incredible. 
Oh, I love that. And now you're doing it. And you're now I do it. it. Yeah. Amazing. And not many women in, in the, there's not many, you're tied with the EDM world and there are not many women in that world. I mean, what does it feel like to be one of the few people who kind of, you know, go or live in that world? And what do you think we need to do to kind of increase the number of women in that genre? Well, I, I honestly think a lot of it has to do with technology. And in the past, women haven't been as involved in t or had maybe had the opportunities mm -hmm. to be as involved in technology because programming and being a DJ and electronic music is all about understanding you know, technology mm -hmm. and the programs. And, and so I think if women felt more comfortable, you know, and they are, like you see mm -hmm. on YouTube, like that's what it's all based on as well, is understanding how to edit and how to understand the analytics. And you see women rising on YouTube like crazy, you know, mm -hmm. just as much as any, any guy is. And so I think that's going to bridge the gap, is, is technolo technological understanding. Sure, okay, so what's next? What's the rest of the year looking like for you? Besides the Christmas, Christmas. album. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pretty much. That's yeah. like my main focus yeah. is, you know, I'm going to start soon writing for that and then, you know, releasing the album, then doing a Christmas tour. So pretty much I'm going to be so sick of Christmas by the time New Year's Yes. Hits. But I'm but excited. Hopefully the cold weather will get you in the mood. <laughs> yeah. If it's, I'll go to Utah. It'll snow a little bit. It'll be great. Okay. Well, we have a whole crowd here, and I wanted to get to some fan questions before we yeah. let you go. Um, so if we have the first person ready to rock. Yeah, All right. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, you're What's one, up? You're like my biggest hero. I have oh. all your songs. And, Thank uh, you. The question I would like to ask you is, if you were to write a soundtrack for a hero, who would it be? Wonder Woman. I just saw the new... F Has anyone seen the new movie? Yeah. I did not expect to love it as much as I did. It's... They made her strong. They made her soft and feminine. Anyways, I'm going off on a tangent, but I'd write for Wonder Woman. <laughs> awesome. All right, who's next? Yep. Hi, Lindsay. What's um, up? Actually, my mom and I watched the movie again, and uh, we felt all the feels. Wanted to say you that. You felt all the feels. All the feels. Yay, thank you. But I'm I so wanted glad. to actually ask you about the, uh, the song that you wrote for Rhyme, how that actually came about, and then, well, if you actually got a chance to play it. Because, mm -hmm. um, well, it was a beautiful game, and your song was more beautiful. Loved <laughs> thank it. Thank you. And, um, but the story was actually, it was a story of loss. I don't know if you knew about that. And they told... They told the story without any words, which kind of reminded me of your a lot of your music. Oh, really is, cool. You know, has a lot of different meanings to it, to different people with no words, and mm -hmm. so they put their own interpretation onto it. <laughs> kind of like the game, so I was wondering if there was any correlation you had there. You saw that and you fell in love with that, or if it was something else. Or Well, I loved, well, first of all, I was really excited because it wasn't a violent game, and I, you know, I don't like to tie myself to super violent things, and so I was really excited just from a branding perspective. I was like, oh, this is something I feel like I can support, and then as I played it, I, w I was amazed by the beauty of it and the graphics, and then I did, I didn't play the whole game, but enough to kind of get an understanding of it, and I did relate to the fact that, oh, that, you know, I just wrote an album all about loss and um and yeah just it was a really cool experience i actually wrote it while on the road probably the only song i've ever fully written on the road um because they were like well it has to be done in a month and i'm like well then i'm gonna write it now so anyways it was a just all around a really cool experience great well we have one last question hello hello uh such a huge fan um i was singing your uh, something wild all through summer last year um yeah. so, so Every time I see you um, performing, I always see that violin. Is it the same violin that you use, or is it different? I have actually quite a few violins, um, and they all have different purposes. Um, on tour, I actually usually take like four, because I like it's almost like costume changes. You know, it's like you come out with a new violin. This one's white and sparkly. You know, this one's you know black and bedazzled it's like so um, and this one's acoustic so I like to kind of almost treat the violins you know each song has a different vibe so it's like well this is the appropriate violin to fit that vibe and um, and then I always have my one violin um, it's called Excalibur and that's the one I always record with Great. Well, thank you for the questions. Brave Enough is out now on YouTube Red. And uh, thank you so much, Lindsay Sterling, for coming by today. We love having you at Build. Give her one more round of applause, everyone. Oh, thank yeah. you, guys.